Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, this is lecture number 49 and we will uh, be talking about today the uh, geometric and algebraic multiplicity and the uh, similarity of uh, matrices. So, what is the algebraic multiplicity? So, algebraic multiplicity of lambda as a root of the uh, it is a multiplicity of lambda as a root of the characteristic equation and the geometric multiplicity is nothing but the dimension of the eigenspace of uh, lambda that means the number of uh, linearly independent eigenvectors uh, corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda. So, these are the two numbers which we will now use for, for, for telling about the multiplicity of this lambda because we have seen in several examples uh, the characteristic uh, roots all the eigenvalues were repeated. So, that we can now quantify with the help of this algebraic multiplicity. So, algebraic multiplicity if for instance one root is repeated 3 times. So, then it is algebraic multiplicity uh, of that particular uh, root is 3 and the geometric multiplicity will be the, the dimension of the eigenspace or the number of linearly independent vectors we have corresponding to that uh, particular eigenvalue uh, lambda. So, with these two classification uh, we will uh, move further, but before that there is a note here that this geometric multiplicity uh, is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity that is an important result which uh, one can formally prove, uh, but it is it requires little more uh, knowledge of uh, uh, diagonalization etcetera. So, we will not prove this result now, but we will keep in mind that this geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity meaning that for example, one, uh, one particular root one particular eigenvalue is repeated uh, 3 times then the corresponding geometric multiplicity meaning the number of linearly independent eigenvectors cannot be more than 3 they have to be less than or equal to 3. So, first we will see with the help of uh, many examples that uh, what are the situations arises here. So, in this case we uh, find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this matrix A which is given as the 6 minus 2 and 2 here minus 2 3 1 and 2 minus 1 3. So, for this eigen uh, for this matrix we will compute the eigenvalue and eigenvectors we have already computed for several matrices in the last lecture. So, we are uh, now the familiar with the computation of the eigenvalues. So, here first we need to write down the characteristic equation for this given matrix which is the determinant of uh, this a minus lambda i determinant of this matrix a minus lambda i is equal to 0 and uh, for this matrix we can uh, compute this uh, determinant here. So, the determinant would be like the 6 minus lambda minus 2 2 and then minus 2 here 3 minus lambda and minus 1 2 minus 1 3 minus lambda. So, this lambda will be subtracted from the diagonal entries and with this now we can expand this. So, here the 6 minus lambda uh, and then uh, we have this product minus this then we will take this 2 then minus 2. So, with this uh, uh, value of this uh, determinant here which will be coming as uh, when we do the factorization of this uh, polynomial that will be coming 2 minus lambda lambda minus 2 and the lambda minus 8. So, I skip this uh, portion here because in this lecture that is not important we have already seen for several examples in the last lecture. So, what we have we have this characteristic equation of this uh, matrix here as this 2 minus lambda lambda minus 2 and uh, lambda minus 8 equal to 0. So, what we observe now that there are two 
uh, distinct eigenvalues and one is repeated two times. So, that means the lambdas are the 2, 2 and 8. So, this eigenvalue 2 is repeated two times and this 8 is repeated one times and exactly that is what we have discussed about this algebraic multiplicity. So, the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 2 this eigenvalue 2 is because it is repeated two times here. So, that I uh, the algebraic multiplicity of this 2 is 2 and the algebraic multiplicity of 8 because this is repeated only once. So, here the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 8 is 1. So, this is how the algebraic multiplicity and the geometric uh, multi uh, algebraic multiplicity is defined to define the geometric multiplicity corresponding to lambda is equal to 2 or lambda is equal to 8, we need to get the uh, eigenspace uh, of these vectors uh, of these eigenvalues. So, the eigenvector corresponding to this lambda is equal to 8. So, remember this lambda is equal to 8 was repeated once. Though we have already the result that the eigen the geometric multiplicity cannot be more than 1 now in this case, because the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 8 is 1. So, without calculation of the eigenvectors as well, we can claim that the, uh, the geometric multiplicity will be 1, because definitely there will be, uh, uh, will be uh, one linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to this uh, uh, lambda is equal to 8. So, there cannot be two linearly independent eigenvectors that was that result says, where we have uh, that, that this algebraic multiplicity is always bigger than the geometric multiplicity. So, here uh, we know though beforehand that this there will be uh, there cannot be two linearly independent vectors, it has to be only one because the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 8 is 1 and it, uh, the, uh, it is must to have uh, at least one eigenvectors because that is what the foundation says. So, we have already this a minus lambda i and the determinant is equal to 0. So, we have non trivial solution always uh, for this equation here a minus lambda x is equal to 0. So, there will be definitely uh, one linearly independent eigenvector, uh, but there cannot be two this is what we will see in this case as well. So, here this is a minus lambda i. So, this uh, lambda means 8 here was subtracted from the diagonal entries of a and then we have x 1, x 2, x 3 and the right hand side this 0 vector. So, we can reduce to this echelon form this matrix and uh, so, 2 minus 2, 2 first row as it is and then here we can subtract this. So, this will be 0 when we subtract will be minus 3 and this is minus 3 and here also we can add in the first step. So, this will be 0, this will be minus 3 and this will be minus 3. Uh, and then in the second step again with the help of the second column. So, in the first step what do we get? It is like minus 2, minus 2, 2 and then here we have 0 and then minus 3 and minus 3. Here we get when we add row 1 and row 3. So, we will get 0, we will get minus 3 and minus 3. So, again with the help of the second row we can now get actually re get rid of this number here minus 3, but this will also become uh, 0 together. So, this is the situation, this is the row reduced echelon form for the system of equations for this matrix. And now, we observe here that uh, this is the pivot element and here also we have the pivot element. So, the first two columns uh, have pivot element, the third column does not have pivot element. So, that corresponds to this x 3 uh, component of this vector and which we can take as the free variable. So, there will be only one free variable which was clear from there also because the algebraic multiplicity was 1 and corresponding to that we cannot get two free variables. So, the number of free variables tells about the number of linearly independent eigenvectors. So, here we cannot have two linearly independent eigenvectors. So, we know uh, in advance that there will be only one free variable in this case there cannot be two free variables. So, this x 3 is the free variable which we can choose again as, uh, as alpha having that alpha we can compute the x 1 and x 2 in terms of, of alpha. So, then we can write down this solution of this equation x 1, x 2, x 3. So, here this x 3 was taken as alpha and x 2 
uh, comes to be from here the minus of x 3. So, we got this minus alpha and from this equation number 1 we will got this 2 times we will get this 2 times alpha uh, this vector here x 1. So, we have this alpha not equal to 0 and alpha belongs to this real number we can take any real number here. So, this is uh, for any alpha not equal to 0 these are the eigen vectors and basically the dimension of this eigenspace is 1 or in other words we got only one linearly independent eigenvector which we can take for instance this 2 minus 1 1. So, that is the only one eigenvector which is linearly independent any other eigenvector which we get out of taking this value alpha, but they are the dependent eigenvectors on this 2 minus 1 1. So, in this case we got only one linearly independent eigenvector and therefore, we say that the geometric multiplicity, the geometric multiplicity that is the number of linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to a given eigenvalue here the lambda is equal to 8. So, the geometric multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 8 is 1. So, here that is the number of linearly independent eigenvectors. When we come to this uh, eigen values lambda is well, eigen value lambda is equal to 2 and remember it was repeated 2 times meaning the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 2 was 2. So, in this case we have the possibility that the corresponding eigen vectors uh, the, the corresponding linearly independent eigen vectors there may be 2 I mean at most 2, but uh, there may be 1 as well we do not know now uh, in advance we have to compute them. Because looking at this uh, uh, eigen value we cannot just tell how many eigen vectors will be linearly independent corresponding to a given eigen uh, value, but what we can tell now because uh, the uh, the, the multiplicity of this 2 was 2 or the algebraic multiplicity was 2 and we know that the geometric multiplicity will be less than or equal to 2. So, we know now that the number of linearly independent eigenvectors um, could be 1 or it could be 2 also now in this case. So, let us compute this. So, this a minus lambda i when we subtract from this diagonal entries this number lambda. So, we get this uh, equation the system of linear equation and then uh, uh, by reducing to this echelon form. So, indeed uh, these two rows are the same. So, we can set one of them equal to 0 immediately and out of this first row again because it is half of this is again uh, when we add to this row number 2. So, this will become 0 and similarly row number 3 if you subtract half of the row number 1 this will also become 0. So, this is uh, here the operation we have taken that the r 2 uh, is, is nothing but r 2 plus half of r 1 and here for r 3 we have taken now the r 3 and minus the half of r 1. So, with this uh, two operations, two elementary operations. We have re got this re row reduce echelon form of this system of linear equation, and then uh, uh, now we can identify that how many linearly independent eigenvectors we are going to have in this particular case. So here, this is the uh, pivot element, which is minus two in this case, and the column number two does not have a pivot here. Also, we do not have pivot. So, there is only one PO that is in the column number 1. So, here x 2 and the x 3 x 2 and x 3 uh, will be uh, will be free variables. So, there will be free variables now free variables. So, we can assign any value to them that means, uh, we are going to have now two linearly independent eigenvectors because the number of free variables decide exactly how many linearly independent eigenvectors we will get. So, in this case we will get uh, two linearly independent eigenvectors and that is what we write. So, here x 2 uh, is taken alpha 1, x 3 is taken as alpha 2 and then we have computed this alpha 1 from this uh, x 1 from this equation number 1. When we write in the vector form um, as this so alpha 1 we have this half and 1 0 alpha 2 we have minus half 0 1. So, we got this two linearly independent eigenvectors. So, this one and this one one can check that they are linearly independent. So, corresponding to this lambda is equal to 2 
uh, because it was repeated this two times the algebraic multiplicity was was two this algebraic algebraic multiplicity uh, of this was two and we also got now the geometric multiplicity. So, the geometric multiplicity is also two in this case. So, we have uh, the algebraic multiplicity 2 and as well as the geometric multiplicity 2. Geometric cannot be more than the algebraic one again, but in this case we got uh, at least the equality. So, the geometric multiplicity uh, of this lambda is equal to 2 is 2 because we have two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to this lambda is equal to 2. Okay, so, this example 2 where we determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, of this A, the matrix is given here 2 4 0 0 2 0 0 0 3 and in this case one can compute easily the eigenvalues will be the diagonal entries because it is a, a lower triangular matrix and for the triangular matrices we have all the eigenvalues sitting uh, uh, on the diagonals here. So, we have this 2 2 3 that is uh, these are the eigenvalues and the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are always it is a diagonal element. So, we have these eigenvalues 2 to 3 the eigenspace now we will compute for lambda is equal to 2 again I mean here the if we want to know the algebraic multiplicity. So, it is 2 for 2 and the algebraic multiplicity of 3 is 1. So, here the eigenspace we want to compute now to get the uh, geometric multiplicity. So, here the eigenspace, so my a minus lambda i, so here 2 will be subtracted from the diagonal entry, so we will get 0 there, 0 there, 1 there. So, this is the now the matrix a minus lambda i and x is equal to 0. So, what do we see here? Where we can actually just uh, take this, uh, we can interchange the row and then we have this. Uh, uh, echelon form row reduced echelon form the 0 we can bring to the bottom if we like. So, we can easily convert to this echelon form here and then we will see there will be two uh, there will be two pivot elements here. So, this will be the pivot element and this will be also the pivot element when we convert into into this uh, echelon form and uh, this middle one. So, here the first column will have a pivot and the, the third column has a pivot and this x 2 is going to be the free variable. So, this x 2 is going to be the free variable that means, only one free variable and we will get uh, only one linearly independent eigenvector and surprisingly here that when we compute this x 3 is equal to 0 that is straight away from this equation and from this equation we will get this x 1 is equal to 0. So, out of this we are getting x 1 is equal to 0 also x 3 is equal to 0 and this x 2 will be the free variable which we can take as alpha and then this x 1 x 2 x 3 we can write down as alpha times uh, 0 1 0. So, here in this case what we observe though the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 2 was 2, but now we got the geometric multiplicity as 1. So, not, not surprising as I said before that for given eigenvalues we cannot predict in advance that how many eigenvalue uh, vectors will be uh, linearly independent. So, we have to compute them. What we know from that result that algebraic multiplicity is less than or equal to the or the geometric multiplicity is less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity that the algebraic multiplicity of this 2 was 2. So, we know that there will be at most 2 linearly independent eigenvectors there cannot be 3 linearly eigen uh, linearly independent eigenvectors for example, in this case, but we do not know whether there will be 2 or there will be 1. So, what we have observed in the previous example though the algebraic multiplicity was 2 and the geometric multiplicity was also 2. In this case we have the algebraic multiplicity 2, but the geometric multiplicity is just 1 in this case. So, here the geometric multiplicity is 1 because we have one linearly independent eigenvector and the algebraic multiplicity of 2 is 2 because this 2 was repeated 2 times. Coming to the eigenspace of this lambda is equal to 3. So, we know already that there will be only 1. So, in this case we know that there will be only one free variable 
uh, definitely because the uh, algebraic multiplicity is, is one. So, we cannot have more than one uh, uh, linearly independent eigenvector. So, here if we compute this a minus lambda i x is equal to 0. So, we have this and then uh, when we solve this system. So, we will observe that there are two uh, pivots uh, in this case uh, when we just uh, uh, we, we can just make this to 0 and then this will become also a pivot because this will not be 0 in that case. So, we will have two pivot elements and this x 3 will be the free uh, variable in this case. So, therefore, this alpha is corresponding to x 3 and this x 2 will be 0 and x 1 will be also 0 from this structure of the matrix. So, we will get the solution alpha times 0 1 1 and as expected or there is only one linearly independent uh, eigenvector corresponding to this lambda is equal to 3. So, the geometric multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 3 is 1 and the algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 3 was also 1 in this case. Another example where we will find the dimension of this eigenspace of this lambda is equal to uh, uh, this uh, very special matrix here 1 0 0 1 1 1 1 and 0 0 1. So, in this case again we need to write the characteristic equation. So, that means a minus lambda i is equal to 0. So, 1 minus lambda here 1 minus lambda and 1 minus lambda and that determinant. So, what we will observe in this case that uh, the characteristic equation is lambda minus 1 power 3 is equal to 0. So, we have these 3 uh, roots. So, 1 1 1 that means, this algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 1 is 3 now. So, we have an example where all these uh, we have the same eigenvalues, but repeated 3 times when we uh, compute the uh, eigenspace here meaning we have to compute the uh, eigenvectors. So, with this equation a minus lambda i x is equal to 0. So, what will happen in this case that when we take this minus lambda i. So, minus 1 from the diagonal entry. So, this diagonals will be also 0 and we have this uh, very uh, simple um, example and in this case there will be only one pivot. So, this first column will have pivot and the second and the third one will be the free variables. So, the, this is going to be the pivot element and uh, then nothing else. So, we have the free variable, we have the free variable. So, there are two free variables meaning two uh, linearly independent eigenvectors. So, here for x 2 we assign alpha 1, x 3 we assign uh, alpha 2 and from this equation which says x 1 plus x 3 is equal to 0 means uh, x 1 is equal to minus x 3. So, we get here x 1 is equal to minus alpha 2. So, when writing in this vector form we have x 1, x 2, x 3 as alpha 1. So, this component here is 0. So, 0 and then the second place will be 1 and then 0 for alpha 2 at one place here minus 1 and then 0 and x 3 is all alpha 2 here. So, 1. So, we have this x 1 x 2 x 3 as uh, a, a alpha 1 times this 0 1 0 alpha 2 times minus 1 0 and and 1. So, there are two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to this uh, eigenvalue 3. So, eigenvalue 1 here which was repeated 3 times. So, the uh, algebraic multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 1 was 3 and the geometric multiplicity of this uh, lambda is equal to 1 is uh, 1 Well, oh, sorry 2. So, there are 2 linearly independent vectors. So, the dimension of this eigenspace is 2 or the geometric uh, multiplicity of this lambda is equal to 1 is 2 in this case. So, again uh, though it was repeated 3 times, but we got only this uh, dimension as 2 not 3 and, and not 1, but the possible uh, values here could be uh, 3, uh, it could be 2 as this is the case here, but it can be 1 as well. In this example again we will take this identity matrix. So, very simple to evaluate. So, we have uh, we want to find the dimension again of the eigenspace of this A is equal to this identity matrix. And if we uh, write down its characteristic equation, we will get this lambda minus 1 power 3 is equal to 0. So, again we have these 
uh, 1 1 1 the, the algebraic multiplicity of this Eigen value is uh, just uh, 3 now. So, corresponding to this 1. So, algebraic multiplicity is 3 and if we compute the geometric multiplicity now that is interesting. So, the Eigen space will be computed by this a minus lambda i x is equal to 0 and therefore, when we subtract from the diagonal entries this uh, Eigen value 1. So, what we will get this 0 matrix here in x 1 x 2 x 3 is equal to again the 0 matrix. So, what do we see now in this case that there is no uh, there is no pivot yeah there is no pivot here and all the variables x 1 x 2 x 3 they are the free variables. So, we can choose uh, we can assign any value to x 1 x 2 x 3 they are free here uh, and that is a, a very special case which we have just uh, seen now uh, that uh, we got this 0 matrix here as a minus lambda i and then we have uh, the possibility of choosing this x 1 x 2 x 3 freely. So, whatever we like and we have taken alpha 1 here alpha 2 and there are alpha 3 because all 3 are, are, are free variables and then this x 1 x 2 x 3 we can write down in terms of these alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 as uh, this combination alpha 1 uh, this 1 0 0 alpha 2 0 1 uh, 0 and alpha 3 will be 0 0 1. So, we have 3 linearly independent eigenvector in this case corresponding to this uh, lambda is equal to 1. So, the algebraic multiplicity of lambda 1 was 3 and also the geometric uh, multiplicity which is the dimension of the eigenspace that is also 3 in this case. So, we have seen in this example that uh, if it is repeated 3 times it is also possible that we can get uh, the, the full dimension here the dimension of the eigenspace that is 3. Uh, as many times as the, the lambda was repeated, but uh, what that result says that it cannot be more than 3 and naturally that is the case here because the uh, dimension uh, that is the full dimension because the elements belongs to this R 3 and we cannot have the dimension more than 3 in that sense also we can uh, conclude here. There is a concept here the similarity of matrices which we will introduce here and we will continue further discussion in the next lecture. So, an n cross n matrix B is called similar to an n cross n matrix A if we have this B is equal to P inverse A P. If we have this relation between the between the matrix A and B then we call this B is similar to the matrix A or A is similar to the matrix B. And what do we uh, this P what is the P for some non singular matrix P if there exists a matrix here this p inverse I mean this non singular matrix p therefore, the p inverse makes sense. So, if we have this relation between the two matrices here b and a that p inverse a p gives the b the other matrix then we call that these two are similar. Why do we use the similar words some of the properties we will uh, check today itself that they share very many common properties this b and a uh, in terms of the eigenvalues eigenvectors and there are other considerations as well which we will continue in the next lecture. So, today we will see that if B is similar to A then the B has the same eigenvalues as A and if X is an eigenvector of A then this Y is equal to P inverse X is the eigenvector of B corresponding to the same eigenvalue. So, meaning if we know the eigenvalues and eigenvector of one we can get the eigenvalues eigenvectors of the other. In fact, they same they have the same eigenvalues and the eigenvector also uh, will be uh, just the p inverse x where p we have introduced already in the similar uh, t definition. So, what we take that let us say this uh, lambda is the eigenvalue of this matrix A uh, and the similar to A we have the B matrix. So, first we relation we have for this A that x is the eigenvector and, and lambda is the eigenvalue. So, we have this relation A x is equal to this lambda x and what we do now uh, we multiply by this p inverse here. So, the right hand side we have p inverse p is that matrix which we are talking about this similarity there. So, we have p inverse a, a x and here also p inverse. So, the lambda is constant. So, we have p inverse x there. And then what we do, we have here the lambda p inverse x the same, 
the p inverse a again we have introduced this identity matrix. So, here we have introduced uh, identity matrix which we have written as p and p inverse x and then uh, what we do uh, this we combine here p inverse a p p inverse uh, a p and then we have p inverse x. So, what do we see now this p inverse a p as per the definition of the similarity that a is similar to the or b is similar to a that means this b we can write as p inverse a p. So, this we have this lambda p inverse x is equal to b times this is b p inverse x. So, what we observe now from this relation that this is the eigenvector p inverse x and this lambda is the eigenvalue of this b. So, if this b is similar to a uh, the b will have the same eigenvalue as a because this lambda was the eigenvalue of a and the eigenvector will be this p inverse x. So, we can get the eigenvector and the eigenvalue uh, of the similar matrices if we know uh, for one. So, lambda is an eigenvalue of b and p inverse is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Another uh, result which actually uh, we have seen already in this first result a b are the square similar matrices then they have the same characteristic polynomial. So, eventually we have seen already that they have the same eigenvalue. So, if we have the same eigenvalues meaning they have the same characteristic polynomial, but this is just uh, another way of looking at it. So, we take this b is p inverse a p this relation and then if we uh, get this determinant b minus uh, lambda i that is the characteristic polynomial b minus lambda i the characteristic polynomial of this b here is equal to the determinant this b we will replace by this p inverse a p minus the same thing this p inverse p that is the identity matrix we have uh, introduced here. I mean you can see easily that this is nothing but the lambda i because lambda we can take common then we have p inverse i p and then p inverse i uh, is equal to nothing but the p inverse p lambda times and this is i. So, lambda times i. So, we have again here this is nothing but the lambda times i only, but we have uh, rewritten in this form that p inverse lambda i and p. So, here the determinant uh, we have p inverse uh, let us take common from both and then we have a here and minus this lambda i and p from this right hand side we can take as common. So, now this a minus lambda i and then this uh, we can use the property of this determinant here the product of these three uh, matrices that means the determinant of p inverse determinant of this middle one a minus lambda i and the determinant of p. So, here the determinant of p inverse and determinant of p will cancel out each other we will get just one here and what we will get that is the property of this determinant p and p inverse they are just the reciprocal and here we have determinant of a minus lambda i. So, what we have seen that the determinant of this b minus lambda i is equal to determinant of uh, this a minus lambda i. So, they have the same uh, characteristic polynomial in other words we can uh, say again that uh, this a and b will have the same uh, eigenvalues and we have seen again uh, in the previous uh, slide here the relation for the eigenvectors as well. Okay, coming to the conclusion. So, in this lecture we have uh, talked about the algebraic multiplicity and that was nothing but the number of occurrence of an eigenvalue and we have also seen the geometric multiplicity that was the number of linearly independent eigenvectors uh, associated with that eigenvalue and always this is the case that geometric multiplicity is less than uh, equal to the algebraic multiplicity. And we have also talked about the similar matrices that means uh, B and A are called the similar to each other or they are the similar matrices. If we have this relation that B is equal to P inverse A P for some uh, invertible matrix P. So, these are the references used to prepare these lectures and thank you for your attention.